What's up, freaks? This is Steve Says, episode number 86. Today is all about the P word. The P word. And it's, it's something we all need more in our lives, especially men. Something that most people, especially men, do not get enough of in their life. They need some more of the P to get by, just to survive in everyday life. They need maximum amount of the P word. First off, you know, Steve Says. Steve Says is, is a show, a weekly show we do here. It's about a having a no excuses, badass mindset, guiding you to adapt and overcome to destroy the obstacles, preventing your success in your health, your family, your finances, so that you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own freaking terms. So let's go back to this P word. And you know, a lot of times here on Steve Says, we are we are telling you what you need to hear, not necessarily what you might want to hear, but that's just the way it is. And you know some people will hate, but most can relate. And we are always bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. So this week, we're talking about the P word. Are you getting enough of the P word in your life? And, and would you like to hear about the... We're going to tie this into the 130 mile bike journey that Tyson and I did. I'm going to break it down from the beginning when we first heard about it to the end, to the aftermath, everything that had to happen, the the valuable lessons that we learned along the way and also how that ties into this this elusive P word that we need to have, that men especially need to have and what you can do or change in your life to get more of this freaking P word, especially men. We need some more fucking P in our lives. And let's get into it. You know we're always coming from a perspective of no excuses about the mind, the body, your business, about having a role model mindset so that you can learn how to operate to dominate in your discipline, your energy, your confidence, your actions, and all about being your freak self. And that's what Steve says is all about. And we are going to talk about the P word here in a second. We're going to get to that. But... Let's start breaking down this this bike ride that that Tyson and I did. So it was a hundred. It was about it was originally about 130 miles. We did a little bit different of a start route. So for us, it was about 121, 122 miles from Orange County, California, all the way down the coast to San Diego, California. And let me tell you, the the, the really the purpose of doing this in general, the purpose of doing anything like this, really, people run marathons or whatever they do, they become a a cage fighter. It's just to go through suffering. It's to do hard shit because in hard shit, you're going to learn a shitload of lessons. You're going to get a ton of time for reflection. Imagine being on a bike for 12 fucking hours. You're going to get tons of reflection time, tons of aha moments and breakthroughs in in your your strategies going forward in freaking life. You're also going to make connections if you're doing it with other people. And it's a lot of pain, but pain is going to lead to a lot of growth. It's going to lead to building your fucking character, but also humbling you at the same time. So this is all the purpose of suffering and doing hard shit. And that's really what this is all about. This weekend, before this bike ride, that was on Sunday, on Saturday, we had the Squire program. It's a father and son program for, for kids 13 to, six, 13 to 16, 12 to 16, whatever, as they're starting to transition into manhood. And it's, it's a bonding experience for fathers and sons that we were administering this course for them. And one of the take-home lessons that I told them is to do... So it's so, it sounds so fucking simple, and we've talked about it here on Steve Says just a couple episodes ago, about do hard shit. Always choose the hard route. It, easy is fucking easy. Easy is easy for a reason. It's called fucking easy because it's easy. It's It's... Easy is a mediocrity, easy is average, easy is fat and lazy and fucking broke. That's what easy is. So, no, the P word is not pain. All day since I put this post out earlier about the P word, I've been getting messages from dozens of people trying to guess what the word is, and no one has guessed the word yet. I've heard pain, I've heard purpose, I've heard persistence. Although all these things are required for this ride that we did and and the lessons we're looking to learn, persistence, 
No one has guessed the P word yet. And, and since I said that men especially really need this in life and we're searching for this P word in life, you could imagine some of the things some of you fucking freak shows have got me. And they thought this is, they, they were telling me they're going to watch because they thought this was going to be a, a chance for them to get, get a piece of ass. But that's not what this is all about. This is a family show, you fucking freaks. So let's go back to this bike ride, okay? And suffering and suffering, how suffering leads to growth and change and evolution. That's what it's all about. We got some on Facebook. Purpose, passion, no. Andy Foe is in there. Purpose and passion are the guesses. Those are great, but that's not it. So, and it's not even pain. Pain would be great too, but that's not what it is either. So, I'm going to tell you in a second, but I'm just having so much fun playing with this and, and seeing what all the freaks are guessing. You can imagine what some of these freak shows are guessing for the P word that men can't get enough of in their life. Men are searching for in their life and it's not persistence, although that is also falls right in line with this. But I'm going to tell you why that this is what I needed to get out of this bike ride. What I needed to work on out of this bike ride, which I needed a lot more. Perseverance, another great one, but not it. Perspective, another great one, but still not it. We're getting the, the P word. That's why you see. And pressure, another one is great, but still not the word. You can see why I love the word P. I use the word P, P in everything. All the programs that I name have a P, a P, a P half the time. Peak physique right? We have our peak promise. We have a peak pledge. We have a peak plan. All kinds of stuff. Peak principles, perspective, pressure, all good stuff. I love it. Keeping the guesses in coming. So I'll get to it in a second. I'm going to tell you how this bike ride came about. And Andy Foe, who's there guessing, he just said pressure. He's one that put this together. He's pretty much the top tattoo artist literally in the whole fucking world. Check out his stuff. Andy Foe, he's on watching us on Instagram right now. Power is another one, another great guest. So check out Andy's stuff. He put this together, said he was got into biking and he was actually, in, you know, I think inspired to go into biking by one of the other project instructors, Matt Schneider, who's a former SWAT officer and now is one of the leaders over on the, the Fit Body leadership team. He got into cycling. Foe got into cycling, said, you know what? I'm going to be in town for the Squire program, helping out for the Squire program. He's doing some coaching and mentoring while he's in town here in California. He wanted to set up a bike ride from Chino Hills, California, all the way down the coast to San Diego. I heard it was going on. I said, you know what? Me and Tyson are in. Didn't even tell Tyson about it yet. And we're not really bikers. We're not cyclers. We're not bikers at all. The longest ride at that point that Tyson and I ever did was, I think at that point, 54 miles or maybe 65 miles. We've only done three bike rides over 50 miles ever before this bike ride this weekend. Tyson and I. And every bike ride that Tyson has done, he's fucking nine years old. Every bike ride he's done has also been my longest at the same time because we're just not bikers. We have bikes that will just go to the park to go work out or ride around the block a few times or something. Never any real biking or cycling, whatever. So we never did any of this stuff. And let me tell you, we did a we did a 30 mile bike ride, maybe seven, eight, right in the beginning of, of Corona. We did like a 30 mile bike ride. And then I, we, we drove to New York. We drove across the country to New York after that because that was just hard shit. We like doing hard shit and driving across the country. Needed this P word also. We're going to get to it. So you have to wait to find out what the P word is. So we were in New York after a 30 mile bike ride. And, and I did a quick video, Tyson and I, when we were driving across talking about our 30 mile bike ride and said, next we're going to double it and we're going to go all the way to Huntington Beach and back from Orange County. And it's going to be about 60 miles, 54, 54, 55 miles. So we're in New York when I used to have my gyms out there and my father shows up. Tyson's grandfather shows up. First thing he says when he gets out of the car is, hey Tyson, I heard you did a 30 mile bike ride and looks at me and says, what are you doing to this kid? And now he's gonna make, you're going to make him do a 60 mile bike ride. What's wrong with you? You're going to hurt him. He's too young. He can't do it. It's impossible. It'll never happen. Stop doing this stuff. Stop making him do this stuff. This is what he tells me. This is what Tyson's grandfather says to him in front of him, just basically tells him he can't do anything, incapable of doing something. Tyson's making a face like, what is wrong with this dude? And looks at me, and I tell Tyson, listen, I don't care what anyone tells you, even your own fucking family, if they try to tell you you can't do something, you know, that don't let that drag you down or bring you down. And I said, Tyson, you think you can do 60 miles? This was way back then. He's like, of course. I'm like, how? You never did it before. He's like, well, if I did 30, of course I could do 60. What's the difference? Just pedaling on a little machine with some fucking wheels for a little longer amount of time. So don't let anyone drag you down when you start, let let people get in your fucking head, even if it's your family. 
Do not let them. Don't let that negativity. Because I let that guy do that to me for years and years. And never had any faith or confidence in myself or my ability. So fuck that. Block that noise out. Block out that noise. That was actually another one of the lessons I told to the Squire program this weekend. As they were going through this blindfolded course, I was in their ear. As their father was giving them instructions, I was in their other ear. Harassing them, trying to convince them to trying to convince them to to do different than what their father was telling them. And if they did, literally, there was bear traps on the ground, barbed wire on the ground. They had to navigate through a course. Their father was just verbally could tell them and couldn't physically help them go through it. I was trying to convince them and persuade them to go a different route. And that was the lesson with that was block out the outside noise. When you know you're, that your father has good faith and you listen to him. But if you're someone like me, you know that they're not. You're going to do the opposite of what they tell you. But you need to have, at that point, have, have some judgment and, and know the difference between right and wrong. What's going to serve you and what's not. What you need to edit and delete from your freaking life. So that was another huge lesson. Those fathers that brought their sons there, they were there for a reason. Those are fathers that those kids need to listen to. And that have their best interests in mind. And they need to listen to them and block out the outside noise from all those outside sources that are going to get them into drugs and all this other bullshit. So that was another lesson from the Squire program. And it tied right into this bike bike thing also. Yes. Awesome encouragement. Especially now. 100%. So we did. We, we went and did that 54 bike ride and did it again. And that was the only thing. We've only done three rides over 50 miles. But I told I told Andy, Andy Foe, I told him, yeah, we're in. Tyson and I are in. Never even asked Tyson about it. Never even told him about it. I said, after I already told Andy Foe that Tyson and I were in, I said, hey, Tyson, they're going on a 130-mile bike ride through Cal- the co- whole coast of California. You want to do it? He's like, yeah, I'm in. When are we doing it? He thought it was like that week. He was literally ready to go do it that week. This was maybe like a month I don't know, a month ago, two months ago when they when it first came up. I don't even remember. A month and a half, six weeks maybe. I don't know. And the thing is, we just he was just ready to do it. He thought it was that weekend. He was like, do we have anything else this weekend scheduled? He really thought it was that weekend coming up. And he was like, fuck it. I'm in. Let's do it. And a little freak show, I was like, fuck, I hope it's not this weekend. Because I don't know if I'm ready. This little freak's probably ready. But I don't know if I'm fucking ready. And so we didn't do any kind of training or research or any of that stuff before we go on a bike ride you know what we do we fill up our backpacks with some water and some protein bars and a banana we take gun oil gun to like clean your guns with and we spray our chains with it and that's our as far as our research and preparation goes for a fucking bike ride that's what we do then i realized after so after we completed the bike ride this weekend i start looking up about 100 mile bike rides and all this and and apparently 100 mile bike ride is supposed to be like a deep mental and physical like challenge for men to do and how it takes three to five months of preparation of specific training. Andy Foe on Instagram, little freak is a savage. He wasn't even physically or mentally fatigued at the end. May have to go longer next time. Yes, wait till you see. Andy Foe, listen, at the end of this video, I'm going to list last night, Tyson and I and the rest of our family, we listed a whole bunch of, and I have it right here, a freak a freak hard shit list. Our freak don't be a little bitch list that we want to do to, to take it to the next level when it comes to challenges like this. So stay tuned, Andy Foe. Stay tuned because at the end of this video, I'm going to give, I'm going to go over a, a list of challenges we made as a family that we're going to fucking attack after this bike ride kind of pushed us and inspired us to do this. So back to the, back to the, to the, to the bike ride. So, and the, uh, we went for a ride. Maybe like a, two weeks before, just like a 16 mile ride, just to get our legs warmed up for it. Because you could do 16, you could do 138 miles, I guess. That was, that's our philosophy. Like, what's going to stop us from riding a fucking bike? Nothing's going to stop us. As long as we have some water. And even that, if you don't have enough water, you could still make it. Like, fuck that. Like, we're just going to do it anyway. Like, it doesn't matter. It's in our fucking head. Like, I asked him, are you going to stop? Are you going to quit? What if your legs cramp up? He's like, are you kidding? The night before we were talking, he's like, are you kidding? Are you kidding me? He wouldn't even answer my question. He was like disgusted that I was even talking to him about the possibility of him not finishing. It was like a foregone conclusion. It was already done. He was already talking about the food he was going to eat after finishing the bike ride. That's what he was thinking about. And so we do no research, no training. It comes to the to see online. They say that if you're going to do a hundred mile bike ride, you should have three to five months of like cycling training and you should be getting a, a bottle of water for every hour on the road or something like that. And then a hundred, 150 calories for every hour that you're on the road. We know none of this shit. We just brought some supplements, some protein bars, and 
Tyson's a fucking freak. It cracked me up. I got a picture of it. We packed our bags. We, brought, we wanted to carry all our own shit. First, to make it harder to have some weight. Plus, we knew we were going to be on a different time schedule than everyone else. So I need to make sure we had enough food for this entire trip. Enough, enough carbs and calories and water. So we carried our own shit. I had, I don't even know, a 30-pound pack on. Tyson had probably a 12 to 15-pound pack on. Plus, little a bunch of pouches stored on our bags, filled on our bikes, filled with water and maybe some kind of self-defense tools and stuff like that because we were out on our own most of the time. And he taped, he, had a, he, he ran out of room inside his backpack. He had these organic cheese doodles that he wanted to bring so bad. He put some in a plastic bag, put it on the outside of his pack, and he taped it on with fucking scotch tape. You should have seen this. This is how we prepared for going on a 130-mile bike ride. That was the extent of our research, taking some scotch tape and taping some organic cheese doodles to his backpack so that he could have those at some point in the ride when he felt the hunger and the need to eat some, eat some. Mario Estrada seen Andy Foe in the promo videos for the project in the ice bath. Yes, he's coming in next month. Andy Foe was the honor man of class 005, 005 project graduate who set this up. This was all with project graduates from the program you know that we run, we talk about all the time. So anyway, we went on this 17-mile bike ride a couple weeks before. Both of our bikes broke, and we're busy. I didn't get a chance to fix them. I brought them. We didn't get them fixed until literally the day before. Both of our tires are screwed up. The brakes are screwed up. The gears are screwed up. Because we don't have those fucking fancy little things, but like they have like a G-string little tire, those little thin street bike tires. We have fucking hybrid mountain bikes. Hybrid mountain bikes that... Don't, aren't that efficient for a long ride on the street or even uphill. They're heavy, they're clunkier, they're bigger, bulkier, not as smooth, not as smooth gears, whatever. So our shit broke. We got it fixed like the day before and it got fixed just in time. We didn't have any jerseys for ourselves because we didn't order them and luckily two jerseys are exact sizes that were extra from two guys that had to back out. So we even got two jerseys. Think about how that works. And like six... Maybe three or four weeks before, I fucked up my knee doing jujitsu for the first time in like 10 years. And of course, being a knucklehead that I am, just going straight full speed right off the bat, fucking tweaked the knee real bad. It's still fucked up. And, but whatever, you gotta do what you gotta do. Here's the craziest part of this whole thing the craziest part of this whole thing that we did this on less than four hours of sleep. Less than four hours of sleep. We had the Squire program the day before that ended pretty late. And I got home from the Squire program. And since I was going to be gone the whole next day, of course, we want to spend some family time. So we stayed up late the night before. We woke up at 1.30 a.m. to get ready because we still had to put our lights that we got from Amazon onto the bike, put the water bottles we got at Dick's Sporting Goods onto the bike, and pack our cheese doodles with scotch tape around the fucking bags. So we got up at 1.30 and we actually hit the road at 3. So we were just packing and preparing and planning and, and eating and hydrating for from... We got a call coming in. We got to block that crap. From 1.30, we left to actually hit the road. Actually hit the road at 3 a.m. Pitch black. We hit the road. The rest of the guys were leaving about 5 or 6 a.m. We wanted to get a head start because we know Tyson has a smaller bike, smaller legs. We have shitty bikes. We're carrying fucking packs on us and all kinds of weight on our, on our bikes. So we left so much earlier and... Because we wanted to get a head start so they weren't waiting for us all fucking day to finish. So we did this literally on less than four hours of sleep. Luckily, the, the, the Squire program the day before, there, for those kids at the Squire program, we had some mac and cheese and, and mashed potatoes. So for the car, first carbs I've had in like months, load up on those carbs, brought some of those carbs home to Tyson. We loaded up. We were good to go. We just needed some cheese duels and fucking protein bars to get through this. So that was the extent of our training. Cheese doodles taped to the bag, some gun oil on the chains, and some some backpacks filled with water and protein bars and gummies, organic gummy bears. That can't go wrong with that. Because listen, we want to do hard shit. We want to do hard shit. Make the hard fucking harder with the mountain bikes. We didn't have those little ice skater clips or shoes, whatever those guys. I hear them clicking their shoes and they they take their foot and they snap it on a pedal. We don't have none of that shit. We just wore our regular fucking sneakers, our regular clothes, and jumped on the damn thing. And then we did get the, pro- the cool project shirt with the, the little funny little pouches in the back like a kangaroo or something up your ass or whatever that is. So we left at 3 a.m. I forgot the backpack because we took some pictures, didn't want the pack on, wanted to show the jersey. Had to, we were two miles out, 
had to fucking turn around. Luckily, the Russian woke up the little midget and they met us. So I have to drive all the way back up the hill to our house. They brought me the backpack because I forgot it. So we actually did a couple extra miles there in the beginning. So it's fucking pitch black, pitch black. And it's not that bad, right? Our house was pretty warm going outside the house. But about 45 minutes into the ride, as we got to Anaheim, we went under this bridge. As we went under this bridge, it just went from warm to fucking ice cold. Like we just went into a freezer and it stayed that way. This is only at about 3.45 a.m. It was freezing. So I look up. What time's the sun going to be up? It's got to be up at like 5 a.m. 6.56 a.m. The sun's going to come up. So we had to suffer in that freezing cold for like over three hours, like freezing. I stopped to do some posts and stories on Instagram. Couldn't have used my fucking fingers because we don't have we didn't have any of those biker gloves or whatever. We were just wearing a like a little Under Armour t-shirt and then a, a biker little jersey on top of it. So we're going through the, the the trails, the bike trails, pitch black with the little Amazon lights on the front of the bike, swerving and dodging the fucking crackheads and, and the homeless people and all this stuff, waiting for the sun to rise. Finally get out to like our the third point on the beach. We pass by. Every single beach going down the, the coast of Southern California. We stop at one beach finally to stop and eat because we kept riding through all that coldness. So we didn't take a first real break for, I don't even know, four or five hours. We stopped just to have a, some, a couple little, I think we had like a banana and some, some gummy bears and like a half of a protein bar or something. And we saw some Tai Chi going on on the beach. Tyson started doing some Tai Chi. So we're like on zero sleep. Didn't eat the whole day pretty much. Just rode for like four or five hours. The sun still is just about to come up and Tyson's there on the side watching these people all the way down on the, on the, on the, on the beach doing Tai Chi and he starts doing some funky ass Tai Chi with them. And listen, it was just the two of us this entire time. The two of us, the whole pack was still behind us. So we made it our goal to stay ahead of the pack, to stay ahead of the freaking pack because we don't want them to pass us up and have to wait till like midnight for us to finish. That's why we left so early. And here comes the P word. I knew it was going to require a lot of the P word from me. And this is why I really wanted to do this, why I wanted to leave so early. I wanted to go through the freezing cold. I wanted to carry all of our own shit with a heavy ass pack on with inefficient bikes for this crazy ass fucking ride that really only should have taken us about eight, eight and a half, maybe nine hours max. It took us 12 hours of riding time and almost like between breaks and stopping and, and whatever, going to get water at a store a couple times, like close to 14 hours total time out there because I know like if you've ever ridden a bike think about your ass on the bike for 12 hours through freezing cold and then the sun comes up and it's like 90 degrees now you're through the heat and I'm with Tyson it's just me and him no one else watching him except for me the p word that men need to have that we don't fucking have any of we are lacking is fucking patience the word that no one guessed is fucking patience that is what we lack, is patience. There is your P word. Because I knew doing something like this would be such an extreme case. Think about it. I could have made that ride in eight and a half, nine hours, probably even less if I really pushed myself. I think I could probably do it in under eight hours if I really went hard. Even with a shitty bike, even with a fucking huge, big backpack on my back, still think I could have made it. But it took 12 hours of riding time, almost 14 hours total, because I wanted the bigger challenge of patience to, to push myself and push my patience and make it the entire time without telling Tyson you're moving too slow or anything like that or come on or it's just taking too fucking long. Because first of all, that little kid behind me did not bitch or moan or complain for 12 hours of riding. Not one single time, not one single complaint. He even fell at one point. We we're going up this a fair, a little steep incline. And he's get, getting some side-to-side momentum. He just cut it too much to the side. And he wiped out one time. Right on the hill. Right in the middle of traffic. Wipes out. Hops back on. Brushes his little skimmed up knee. Hops back on the bike. And just keeps fucking banging it out up the hill. Not a fucking complaint in the world. So who would I be to complain that he's going too slow? On top of this, think about it. Fucking nine-year-old. Woke up at 1.30 in the morning. On a Sunday morning. Less than four hours sleep. To go ride with a shitty ass bike for 130 fucking miles. Imagine, imagine I'm gonna sit there and tell him, oh, come on, Tyson, you're moving too slow. You're gonna hold us up. They're gonna catch us and pass us. Imagine I said that even one time. So I made it my goal because I've caught myself on other rides that we've done in the past, right? We were doing like 17 miles, 30 miles, and I would tell him, I'd be like, come on, hurry up. We're gonna take too long. We're gonna be here all day. I wanna get home. You're going too slow. You can go faster than that. I would tell him stuff like that in the past. I told myself, I'm not gonna say that not one single fucking time. 
I don't care if this ride takes us 18 hours. We don't get there till tomorrow. This is going to be a major test in my patience. As much as this is going to be a physical challenge, this is going to be a mental and a personal development challenge to test my patience, to push my patience and put it to a whole new fucking level. That's going to serve me in so many other areas of life. That's what I was looking additionally to get out of it. Other than, of course, me and the little freak show getting in a little bit of a workout and just hanging out, bonding together and doing and completing this together. But patience is what I fucking wanted. And there was a, there was a point we got to a part of a, a military base where it, you couldn't go through unless it was military property, something. And we thought we were in the wrong place. We would have had, would have had to backtrack like 20 miles. And I was like, fuck it. We just took a chance. We went through the, the bike trail and the military base and they can search your bags and whatever. May or may not have had self-defense tools on me. Don't know which ones are. Maybe not. Whatever. Whatever. That's a different story. Anyway, after the military base, you know what you do? You have to go on the freeway for eight miles on the freeway. Now, I'm not talking like a one-lane highway. I'm talking a major freeway with cars going by like 80, 90 miles an hour. You're allowed to drive on the shoulder for this eight-mile period of the freeway. So I'm like, Tyson, you want to do it? He's like, yeah, why not? He's like, it'll be cool. I'm like, fuck. I was thinking in my head, I'm gonna, we should maybe go backtrack and go around. He's like, fuck it, let's go. Let's jump on there. We'll be fine. So we go on the freeway, the I-5, going down Southern California. This is after we pass most of the beaches. And we finally finish the freeway part. We start getting down towards the closer beaches, getting towards San Diego. And there's one of those like Aussie berry things, bowls or whatever. So I'm like, we were at that point like, at over an hour ahead of the group still because we knew where they were. And at that point, I was telling myself in my head, I'm like, I want to beat these guys to that, that finish point so fucking bad. I want to beat them there. Show Tyson that we can just hold them off, that they're not going to have to wait for us because we thought, we thought we were going to hold up the whole group. So I wanted to show them we can beat them there. We were trying so hard at that point to beat them. We were so far ahead, so we stopped for, this, for those banana, blueberry, Aussie bowl things or whatever the hell they are. And we order it. And this place was the slowest fucking place in the world. Literally, it took over 30 minutes for them to make two smoothies and a fucking Aussie bowl, or however the hell you say that word. He even brought mine out after about 20 minutes and calls it, and some other guy grabs it and takes a bite of it. He says, no, that wasn't yours. So some guy was behind me in line, actually took mine, and his Corona ass already slobbered on it or touched it all up, finger fucked it or whatever. So he took it. I had to wait like another 10 minutes for him to make another one. So there the whole time that I'm waiting, other people were waiting also. Like three other people went in there, flipped out, cursed the people out, and asked for a refund and stormed out of the place, threw their, threw their receipt on the ground right inside the store, like just rude to these people. Of course, it was horrible service and shouldn't have been waiting that long. But as I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, right, the whole point of this ride was patience. I'm sitting here in this bowl place. Tyson was even saying, let's, let's ask, just ask for a refund. I don't even want it anymore. Let's just go. It's taking too long. We're sitting there. He's like, those guys are going to catch us. Then they're going to be waiting for us. I was like, no, we already ordered it. We waited already 20 minutes. Let's just wait and see what happens. Like, it was such a lesson to that everything happens for a reason. Even shit that seems like it's fucking you up. Like, this is just an additional test of my patience. I could have flipped out, cursed a guy out, got a fucking refund and all this other stuff. But I just told Tyson, we're just going to ride it out. We're just going to wait and we're going to get it. We're going to have our things, right? And so we did. It took like over 30 minutes to get these fucking drinks. Then we go back on the road. Mile number 99. If you're from the San Diego area, you know around Torrey Pines, it's like Torrey Pines Parkway Boulevard, whatever it is, you see this nice little beach, little private little beach with these huge cliffs. Beautiful sight. The only problem is if you're riding on that road, you got to ride up to the top of that cliff. It's about, took about 20 minutes at about two and a half, three miles an hour of grinding up with these bikes up to the top of that hill. You know how many times Tyson stopped? Zero. When we made it to the top after 20 minutes, I'm talking about 20 minutes of a constant incline. We get to the top. I'm like, Tyson, you need to, you want to stop for a little while? Do you want to recover up at the top? He's like, nope. Those guys are going to be behind us. They're going to catch us. They're not going to have to wait for us. We're going to keep rolling. He's like, we'll even beat them there. Then at that point, we wanted to beat them there so bad. He didn't stop on the way up the hill. He didn't rest at the top of the hill. We just kept fucking going. Like full speed, like nothing happened. Like this hill is, was fucking brutal. I'm telling you, this hill is fucking brutal. Right after that hill, there's, I don't even know, maybe 30 miles left. The fucking gears broke on my bike that every two pedal, three pedals, it'd go one, two, uh, and the pedal would broke. One, two, three, uh. So that killed our flow right there. The, the gears completely broke 
on the on my bike. Andy Foe, what's up? He's still in there checking out, going to family time. He just got back home to New York. So we didn't stop at the top. My gears broke. We're still trying to hold them off. We, we were checking in with them where they're at. They're, they're kind of closing in on us. They're not too far behind us at this point. So we keep pushing and pushing. Of course, I make a wrong fucking turn. Make a wrong turn. We have to backtrack like several blocks. A lot of traffic. Crazy cars all over the place. Like literally probably near death like 30, 40, 50 times. And as we're coming back from backtracking, we come to this intersection and right at that intersection, the group of, the, of, of, of all of the rest of our team, all the project freaks, catch us right at that intersection. So literally, if I didn't make that wrong move, they would have passed us. But they didn't. And I thought we wanted to beat them. But this is kind of a huge lesson in patience. And yes, persistence and all that other stuff. And pain, and all those other P words. But patience is the one. This is all a test in patience. We, we mess, missed the, missed the, made a wrong turn. Had to come back. But it was just perfect timing that if we didn't miss that turn or we didn't turn around at the exact moment, the exact second we did, we caught them at the coming back to the intersection to get back on track that they were zipping by. We would have missed them if we turned back one second later. And the thing is, we rode back together with them. And let me tell you, Andy Foe, who was just on here, as we're riding back, I lead Tyson. I ride in front. He's behind me. So sometimes he'll drop back, you know, 25, 30 feet. Andy Foe saw that. He stayed back there with him. Lucky stayed back there. A couple other guys would, would stay back there just making sure Tyson was good back there because they, they weren't used to that, seeing him behind me, kind of by, thinking he's by himself at certain points. So, like, just an awesome bunch of freaks. And we had about 20 miles to go maybe once we ran into them, something like that, with my fucked up gears. And we're, we're there together with us. They're staying with Tyson. Then they, there's maybe about five miles left. They kind of took off. And it's back to just me and Tyson. Back to how we started. By ourselves. And we're pedaling. We're about coming up on the one mile mark. One fucking mile left. And we see the group of the Project Jerseys waiting on a street corner. And we finished the last mile. They waited for us so we could all finish together. And right, right then I'm like, that's an awesome group of fucking dudes right there. They were hungry. They were tired. They were exhausted. They burnt their bodies out. They had no water left. They had no snacks left. They just wanted to finish. And they were sitting there waiting for us on that corner, probably, I don't even know, five, six, ten minutes for us, and let Tyson take the lead and ride us home, ride us to the finish line, and lead us to the finish line straight through that final mile with families waiting and the support trucks are waiting there at the finish line at the hotel we were going to. So this is something I want to, a, a huge, another huge lesson other than patience. This was a huge test in patience and of course, pride and proud, those are all the ones that people thought of in persistence. All words that definitely are part of it. But I want to ask you, like, in every situation, you have to think, what does a win look like? What does a fucking win look like? Like, if we would have not missed that turn, if we would have not had the patience at that berry bowl place, we would have finished ahead of them. They never would have caught us. They wouldn't have caught us. We would have finished ahead. Now, at the time, that seemed like that would have been a win. It seemed like that would have been a freaking win. But that wouldn't have been a win. Seeing them waiting for us on that final mile and realizing, all right, we didn't beat them. We're going to go finish with them. That's a fucking win. So you have to look at every situation in life, in your personal life, with your family, in business, and determine what really is a win in that situation. A win isn't always coming in first. Like This is a perfect example. That wouldn't have been a win. The experience of finishing together was a billion times more powerful and effective. And the only thing that got us there was the patience. The patience at the very place. The patience on this whole ride, not pushing Tyson. If I would have pushed Tyson and made him go a little faster, if we were off by one second in any of those areas, we would have missed, missed the group and not finished together. And that wouldn't have been a win to me Once in hindsight. Like once I saw them waiting for that final mile, I'm like, that's a fucking win right there. That is a win right there. That's what this shit is all about. That's what camaraderie is all about. That's what teamwork and family and leadership is all about. That's what patience is all about. They showed patience also. They wanted to get fucking home. They had one mile to go. They ended up getting so far ahead of us. Even after we met up, they kind of took off and disappeared. They were gone. Because they were like, we got to finish this shit. I want to eat. 
I need to get off my damn, this damn bike. This bike is in my ass crack. I feel like I'm getting rammed up the ass by an elephant or something. I want to get the hell off this bike. And they waited on the street corner. Another showing of patience, like demonstrating patience. Like this was a whole entire just day of training and patience. Like think about that patience that could help you. I'm not saying sit around and wait for shit, but we need patience because especially fucking men, we don't have any of it. We never have it. We don't have patience. Like shit has to get done now and yesterday or fucking die. Like patience is is huge and knowing, having the patience to figure out what is a win in this situation. What does a win look like? In this situation. And this is another, this is a lesson we also taught at the Squire program. There was a guy with his, with his son and we had different, different events where they, there was, it was a competition, a race. Now, if one father and his son, the father does all the work in the race, picks the lightest options of weight, does all the work with the sledgehammer, does all the work with the sandbags, and his son just comes along for the ride and they win, To me, that's not a fucking win. They might have won the race, but that is not a win in that situation. There was another father and son who actually came in last place in the race. But the father had the son choose which kettlebell he wanted, which was a heavier one. Had his son carry the kettlebell half the time. Had his son filling up, digging with a shovel to fill up a sandbag as he just held the bag for him and talked to his son and let his son experience it and they came in last place in the race. But for that situation and for what they were looking to get out of that, that was a fucking win. They came in last place and that was a fucking victory. Because the son got more out of it. The son got to experience it. Got to see how to work hard. How to work as a team. Not just rely on mommy and daddy to do everything. That sometimes you got to put in some hard work. And look, we still finished it. We finished together. You did this by yourself and finished it with me just there in case you got stuck and needed help. That's a fucking win. So you have to think, what is a, what does a win look like in each specific situation? And have the patience to figure that out. Just being first is not always a win. If you have to lie, cheat, or steal, or take the easy way out where you get no growth, no development, no return on your investment, that's not a fucking win. That's not a win. So think, what does a win have to look, what, what, what does a win look like in this situation? Think about that. We were done. Tyson, and I want you to stay tuned because I'm going to give you a list of challenges that we're going to start coming up as a freak, freak family. Tyson said this, this bike ride was probably, he said probably one of the top five hardest things he had to do. Like top five hardest workouts or things he had to do. A nine-year-old doing a 120 mile ride with a, with a 99th mile straight up hill for like over a mile straight up hill. He said it was one of the top five hardest things he ever had to do. But it was also one of the top three or four best days of his life. Holy fuck. Like, think about that. That the hardest thing you had to do, spending 12 hours with a bike up your ass crack, and it's one of the best days of your life? Think about that mentality. If you could adopt that fucking mentality. One of the best Three or four days of his life. As it was one of the hardest things though. How could those two things go together? You wouldn't even think it makes sense. But if you have that mindset and you're a freak, that makes perfect fucking sense. And guess what? We woke up the next day. We slept in maybe like 30 minutes extra just to recover. Because we didn't get any sleep the day before doing that less than four hours sleep. We woke up. You know what we did? Right back on the routine. At the gym to go lift weights. The exact fucking time we do Every Monday, we went straight to the gym. He came with me. We went and did our lifting. The morning after, 120 something mile bike ride, 12 hours of biking. We woke up the next morning. The whole family went stuck right back to the routine. Monday is lifting on the machines. We went to the gym, did our machine circuits lifting. No lighter weights. Went a little easier on the legs only because my knee is fucked up. His legs, his legs were a little sore, a little sore. Because let me tell you. Let me tell you something. Here's another lesson for you in this whole thing. A huge lesson, actually. Like, if you're going to be one to do a marathon or a mud run or a Spartan race or whatever you're going to do, a 130-mile bike ride, whatever it is, there's no point in doing hard shit. If you're just going to use that, that hard shit that you did or going to do as an excuse to eat a bunch of shit, 
or as an excuse to waste the next day. Like, he, the next day was he had off from school because it was Martin Luther King holiday. He could have just sat at home. We all could have just stayed there and said, all right, we're just going to take today off. We're just going to relax and recover because we did a bike ride. What would be the point of pushing yourself and voluntarily doing hard shit to then just waste the entire next day because you need to recover and your legs are sore and my knee is fucked up? Fuck that. We got to the gym. We got after it. We stayed on schedule. Right on the same time blocks that Mondays always have. Didn't miss a fucking beat because there's no point in doing hard shit if you're going to use it as an excuse to waste your next day. So what lessons did we get out of this? Of course, always choose hard shit. Of course, the P word, the P word that men need is patience. A huge, a huge test in patience. You know, when, when I'm, again, Going at a different pace with Tyson, looking over my shoulder, literally probably over five thousand times in those in those twelve hours. Literally at least at least a thousand. I don't know about five thousand, but a whole shitload. When he's right behind me, make sure he's good. Make sure he's back there, communicating, talking. We're having fun. He's doing tai chi on the side of the fucking road near a beach. But also, a lesson here was knowing you're on the right path, even when you feel like you're on the wrong path. If you are doing the right thing and You have clear, concise goals and visions about where you want to go. Even when you're on the wrong path, know that you're on the right path. Even when I missed that turn, we didn't stress out. We didn't freak out. Even when that bowl guy with the fruit thing took fucking 30 minutes to make it, we didn't freak out or stressed out. Stayed calm and controlled and patient. Because look, it led to the path of us meeting at that intersection with the rest of our group the exact moment. If we were one second off in any of those events... If Tyson didn't fall on the ground and skim up his knee, we would have missed him. If the, the, if I asked for a refund from that guy, we would have missed him. If I didn't make the wrong turn and have to backtrack, we would have missed him. If I didn't forget my backpack at home and have to do two extra fucking miles right off the start, we would have missed him and wouldn't have got the win of finishing together. So just know that even when shit seems so fucked up, if you are doing the right thing and you know you're doing the due diligence and you're, you're focused and positive and motivated and disciplined and consistent, that you're always going to still be on the right path even when you're on the wrong fucking path. The wrong path is still the right path because it's going to get you to that victory, to that win. Smile at the bullshit that comes your way. Just know that it's exactly where you're supposed to be. A big fucking smile, big old F you to the bullshit. Like, this is where I'm supposed to be, baby. This is where I'm supposed to be, motherfucker. Can't stop me because this bullshit's going to lead me to the win. What does a win look like in this situation? We wouldn't have had the real win. I would have thought about it after if we would have finished this race ahead of them. And I would have been fucking pissed off and wanted to go do it again. Because that wouldn't have been a win if we would have finished before them. It all works out the right way, even with all these setbacks, these fuck ups, these things that happen. My chain screwing up, making us go just that one beat slower because my chain was fucked up. Having the patience to not push Tyson to go any faster because we would have been one second off, we would have missed the group. We came to them at an intersection after a missed turn at the exact moment that they were whizzing through it. We would have missed them. When things go wrong, it's leading to something better. It's leading to bigger things as long as you don't freak out and have a bad thought about it. You can't control. We couldn't control really any of that shit. It just happened. But we can control how we reacted to it and control how we let it lead us to fucking ultimate victory. Because, listen, the easier the easier and more instantly satisfying something is, usually the worse it's going to be in the long run. So it would have been easier if we didn't forget the thing, if the guy didn't, didn't stall with our fruit bowl, if I didn't forget the backpack of the meeting, if Tyson didn't fall, if my bike didn't break, all that. It would have been easier and more instantly satisfying, but worse in the long run, in hindsight. Then think. When something's harder and the more delayed gratification you have, it's always better in the long run. That's a fucking win. Delayed gratification, harder. Hard in the moment, but better in the long run. More satisfying in the long run. That's a fucking win. The wins you need to search for in life. So now I want to share with you, after we did this, we got home. And you know what? My legs, they're a little sore. Today's day two. They're a little more sore than they were yesterday, but it's more than just my knee is fucked up from that I screwed up in jiu-jitsu and it's probably something a slight tear in there somewhere but whatever it's happened before just work through it and legs are a little sore but it just not to not to make it sound like it was easy it was definitely work but 
it wasn't like a huge, huge challenge for us. For us, so we got home. We started. We pulled out. I pulled out this a notepad. I said, Tyson, let's think of some other shit we want to do. I'm gonna read off to you this list now that we have. We have planned. Holy shit, it's late. Now we have planned. For I don't know if we'll get to all this shit in a year because there's a lot of shit on this list. We we were just going and going and going. Let me tell you this stuff that we added on this list. Run a marathon. And this is with, not just myself, this is with the little freaks. This is with the nine-year-old, even a six-year-old, with the Russian. This is all of us. Maybe only Tyson and I will be able to do some of them, but this is what's on our list. Run a marathon. For the little midget, she hasn't done, her longest ride right now is 34 miles. She has a goal of riding a bike 100 miles. Then we also have a, a goal riding 100 miles two days in a row. So 100 miles one day, wake up the next day, do 100 miles again. Then we have another goal, the max amount of miles we can do in a 24-hour period. So literally just biking, rest, biking, rest. How many miles can we make in 24 hours? Pretty much without sleeping. Or maybe you take a nap somewhere for an hour. I don't know. I don't know how that looks, but we'll figure it out. Max, it doesn't matter about how. We're just going to set this stuff up and guess what? We'll fucking make it happen. We'll tape some fucking cheese doodles to our backpack with some scotch tape. Not even duct tape or anything. Fucking scotch tape. We'll put some water in. We'll put some self-defense tools. We'll put some Amazon fucking light bulbs on our, on our mountain bikes. And we'll fucking make it happen. We'll figure it out. Max miles in 24 hours. Then we have another goal of running one mile a day for 30 days in a row. Then beyond that, running three miles a day for 30 days in a row. Then a challenge of max amount of pull-ups in a 24-hour period. So just doing pull-ups for 24 hours, really no sleep, no break. Max pull-ups for 24-hour period. Max push-ups for a 24-hour period. Max squat thrusts to a 24-hour period. And listen to this one. This one's probably the hardest one on here. Because thinking about how can I take the patient's training to another level. So we have a goal on here to meditate for six hours straight, uninterrupted, unguided, Six hour straight meditation is the goal there. Then a goal to hike Mount Whitney, which is the highest mountain in the 48 states, 14,494 feet. And then punch a shark. Of course, little freak show kids came up with punch a shark. So now we have that on our fucking goals of crazy shit to do is punch a shark. So somehow we got to go punch a fucking shark. Then hold our breath underwater for X amount of minutes. We were saying five, but I don't even know what. I got to look it up to see what it is. But right now, it's hold our breath underwater for five minutes. Then it's to have a a 32-degree ice bath for 12 minutes. I don't know where we came with these numbers. We just throw fucking numbers out, and we'll we'll fucking do it. Tape on some cheese doodles and make that shit happen. Then wrestle a bear. That goes along with punch a shark. We're also going to wrestle a bear. Play video games for 24 hours straight. You can see they started getting a little fucking wacky coming up with this. Then maximum amount of miles on foot in 24 hours. Max amount of miles on foot in 24 hours. That could be jogging, walking, hiking, whatever. With resting, just we need to rest. I don't know if that looks, that has sleeping involved or not, but probably if you want to get the max amount, can't be much sleeping, or maybe the sleep will make you be able to get more. I don't know how that looks, but we're going to fucking do it and find out. Don't know how that looks at all. Then bear crawl for one mile. Not nonstop, because we won't be able to bear crawl non-stop one mile, but then bear crawl a quarter mile without any rest, without t- touching a knee or standing up. So bear crawl one mile is different because that one you could touch a knee, but then keep going consistently. So bear crawl one mile for time and then bear crawl a quarter mile without stopping, without resting, without break. And then the final one so far, and we'll add to this list is jump rope for one mile, like literally just jumping rope for a mile. That'll fucking suck. I think the hardest one on there, one of the hardest ones on there, is going to be meditate for six hours straight. Think about it, about all that crazy shit there, and that's going to be a massive test in patience. That's what I'm looking forward to that one. Some of these will take some training. Some of these we could do fucking tomorrow if we want to. We'll figure it out. We'll make it happen. We'll duct tape some fucking cheese doodles on the thing, Put it, grab some weapons, and just head out and attack it. So... What are some ideas? I want to hear some ideas you have of hard shit to do that we can add to our hard shit, our freak hard shit, don't be a little bitch list that we're going to accomplish that this bike ride has kind of inspired us to do. We've been babbling here for a long fucking time. So 
Let me know if you have any questions, comments, suggestions. Put them down below. Tell me which one of those challenges you're going to try. And then make it happen or add to the list. What are some other challenges you, you think would fit in with that list? Let me know. I will talk to you later. You are fucking awesome. No excuses.